the custody suite are receiving one of their youngest and shortest guests. You've been in custody before? Yeah. No. Right, what's going to happen? I'm going to word with this officer, find out why you're here. I've got to ask you lots of questions. All right, just answer them best you can, OK? Do you know what a lawyer is? No. Right, a sister and a lawyer is basically someone that will come here to the police station and help you with the legal side of things, you know, all the law and stuff like that. Do you know how tall you are? No. No, you stand them up against the ruler when you get a second. Why would you stand across this? Four foot seven? Yeah. The boy is 11 years old, but arrested for theft, he's treated like any grown up. Well, then, young man, I'm going to authorise your detention here. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. All right. As my yeah. colleague said, if there's anything you're yeah. unsure about, just ask him. We are trying to explain it in better terms. <laughs> all right. How long will you Until uh, it all gets sorted, I'm afraid. Welcome to the lockup. This is Hull, home to a quarter of a million people and Humberside Police. At police headquarters, the custody suite looks after 6,000 people every year. And amongst them are 600 children. And you date of birth? How old does that make you then? 12. The man in charge, Sergeant Rich West, knows the lockup is frightening, whatever your age. My eight year old's bigger than that lad that we've got in J1. Just think if she was in here. It's scary. Brief circumstances, please. Uh, this young man has been seen to be on the uh, lower roof of the uh, old New York building, removing items of uh, metal and lead, and he's been arrested. All right, can you give me a signature? Do you know what your signature is? No. Basically, if you can start, write your name, just to say that you've answered my questions, OK? Just write my name. Just write your name in that box. So what's going to happen now? We're going to sit in a cell. The officer will show you where the button is if you need any help. OK, and I'll sort out what's happened going on. Speak your boots up. Hold me. 11 years old. Uh, first time in. He looks very worried, that one, doesn't he? I think he was getting a little bit teary there when we was cutting the uh, cords out of his... out of his pants when he was getting... OK, let's bring the next one in. The boy was caught with an older mate who knows the routine. All right, come stand here. You've been in custody before? Yeah. Together they were found on a roof, suspected of stealing lead, and that's not all they were up to. And your date of birth? He's 14 years old. Do you know how tall you are? I thought we'd better check to see if you weren't grown. Go up to that ruler, put you back to it. Was 4'8, what are we now? 5'1, oh, shut up. I'm not growing anymore if you keep using those cigarettes. Cannabis. You just think of when I, you know, when you were a child yourself and, you know, I was still riding bikes by the, you know, when I was 14. So, to, to, you know, to arrest somebody who's 10, 11, 12, you just, you just think what, what does the future hold for them when they're starting out that young. Do you know what sister is? Yeah? Do you want one this time or do you not? You're all right. In the lockup, there's a juvenile wing where the boys will be kept in separate cells. Just grab your jacket and your shoes. It's your blanket. It shocks me in a way, the fact that they're that small. It makes you have the awe factor thinking, oh, when they're that young and you see them walking down the, down the custody bar. But we don't get many in, so um, we don't see a lot of kids that age, thankfully. Thankfully, indeed, because this is definitely no place for kids. Offences. Section 5, public order. For what? Hostile routine patrol. Came across this gentleman with his penis out, urinating in full view of oncoming traffic and members him. of the public. I'm going to get finger the Not living up to his name is Ricky Love. Got out to speak to him. And before we could do checks, etc., the male's behaviour became very aggressive. And, and, and you were going to bat me? Shh. You were going to bat me? very you stretched to bite our nose off, etc., etc. All right. You're a fucking dog, aren't you? We approached him, straight away began being verbally abusive and aggressive. We put the cuffs on him, he then became 
even more aggressive, started struggling with us, he was trying to spit at my colleague in the back of the car. Then it developed from there to where we were threatening to bite our noses off. I'm going to advise you right now, right at that moment, none of that hit me. You better make sure that nothing like that is around again. Because I'm not All right. like you, I'm not like you. Turn around. Uh, uh, listen, uh, listen. Spitting is an officer's nightmare because of the risk of infection. But I want your pipe. Look, look at look, me. Look at look it. Look that look way. Don't look, look like you're going to spit at me. Look at this. Calm at yourself it. down. What are you doing? Calm yourself down. You're only taking the trains off. Right, look at you! Look at you! I'm struggling! Yeah. I'm not struggling! Yeah. Let me get the chance off! I am struggling! Ah! I'm fucking armed! Right, yeah, I'm down then! I'm not armed, Karen! I'm gonna relax. Don't make any silly spitting to your noises. Alright. And there you are. Do yourself out. Put your hands up there. Put your hands up there. Ricky. Is it Ricky or Richard? Right, put your hands on there. Keep them on there. There you go. Any Keep middle names, there. Ricky? Um, Ricky, you're 27, yeah? Question. Yeah, 27. Do you class yourself as white and British? Yeah. yeah. Do you know how tall you are? Alright, alright. N6. Oh, yeah. 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 Two more kids have been arrested, this time on their way to school. Two juvie females come in for a shop theft from St Stephen's. And one of them has kicked off. Let's have a look. One's attacking security. Matt, what one up, please? Yeah, they've spoken to the officers and they've kind of two sisters. It's the younger sister's first time in custody. And the brief circumstances, please? Um, police were called to by security staff reporting that two females had been attacking them after being detained for shop theft. When we attended, um, the two females initially refused to give us details. Uh, so, uh, in order to identify them, we've had to arrest them. So, the issues of the uh, shop theft? She's been seen to conceal a, a bandage. We take your hair grips out and I need your hair bobble out as well. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, but I need it. You're just going to have to go for the wild look. I know how you feel, to be honest. I have str I struggle with my fringe. <laughs> yeah, no, because you haven't got one. <laughs> Yeah, they can fall out, you know. <laughs> right, I'm going to do a risk assessment, so don't be offended by any of these questions. Ask everybody the same questions when they come in, all right? Have you had any alcohol, drugs, or anything like that in the last 24 hours? Solvents? You're not going into um, trouble? Not drugs. No, have you had any alcohol? Um, maybe a bit of wine or whatever it was last night. Who wine, whatever. Yeah. How old are you? 15. Right. Wayne, can you just take the lady down to J1, please, mate? J1. Yeah, please. Right, see you later. It is a really low value shop theft, um, but we couldn't ascertain their names or who they were. Once we got them separated, she's been she's been a pleasure. It's just I think a bit of bravado in front of a sister who was like a wild animal. Uh, we ended up having to struggle with her a little bit to get her in handcuffs. So, yeah. The oldest sister is 16. You all right? Obviously been crying. Yeah. You all right? And the offence, please. She's assaulted the security guard by scratching his hands and kicking him several times in his shins. In the back of the van, she didn't have this blood, which has indicated that she's been chewing inside her lips and all the rest of it. So he's going to have to come out. No, no, no I did. I, I, I did a little bit. He's going to have to come out. He's going to have to come out. She's calm now. Um, she wasn't initially when we informed her that she was under arrest. She just exploded. But luckily, I've got, I've got a muscly colleague who, uh, who came to my assistance. <laughs> And the cause of all this trouble? Well, the marks on you are? Uh, burns. Burns. How's it going? Salt and ice. Salt and ice? Salt and ice is the latest schoolyard dare. The girls were nicking the bandage to treat this self-inflicted frostbite. You put salt on your body, but it's on it. Why would you do that? I don't know. Just to see if it did. Difficult for us because we need to get past the custody stage. When you're bringing in a child, 15, 16 years old, who are completely compliant, they'll be wondering why on earth you brought them to the custody suite when we could deal with them by means of Others. triage, reprimand, caution, whatever. But we have to stress that scene. We're absolutely wild, don't we? Yeah, it was so. like Jacqueline Hyde, you know, it's, you know. We had her up against the wall, didn't we? Trying to struggle in to restrain her. She was just like a wild animal. Are you at work this morning? Time to call the girl's dad. Yeah, been arrested for. Uh, 
suspicion of shop theft uh, in town centre. W would you be available sort of as and when we need you to come down? No, oh, you're, you're heading. You're, you're quite welcome to do that. I don't know how long you might have to wait at the front desk, but um, you certainly can come down and you can have a chat with him at any point if you want to. All right, cheers now. Thanks. Right Bye. Then. In here? Yeah. Right then, you just need to take your shoes off. Hold my notes. That's your mattress. I, yeah. I know you're not, but you can, it's better to sit on there than this hard thing, innit? All right, if you need us, press this buzzer for anything like toilet or whatever you need to be tomorrow. Just press that buzzer and we'll come down to you. All right? Sure. Well, the officers are going to go and get statements from the uh, security staff. And then as soon as your dad gets here, we'll get to interview you. All right. When it's juveniles, there's two schools of thought. One, you can be real nasty to them to make sure they don't want to come back, or you can be nice to them. Um, I think, having two, having two girls myself, I think I, I take the nice approach to them um, to make sure that, one, they're not going to do anything silly to themselves. Um, the fact that they're going to sell, that's, that's a bit of a shell shot for them anyway. So, yeah, they've calmed down. They'll be here for a few hours. They'll think about what they've done, and then they'll uh, get dealt with. The 11 year old boy wants some attention. You alright? Yeah. You sure? Is this your first time in custody? Yeah. What do you think of it? Um, Boring, isn't it? No tellies or playstations in here, isn't he? Once your dad gets here, what's he gonna say? Um, Kick your butt. Yeah. Do you want a drink or anything? A cup of tea? No. Yeah. You want sugar in it? No, yeah, two. Two. You understand what's happening to you? Get the water in case you want it later on. Don't you fall off that bench, you're not the biggest of lads, are you? Sometimes they come in and they really like, yes, I'm in again. And they try and think the big I am. And it's a bit of a bravado for a minute, really. Tell the mates that we've been in custody. But these two, they do look a bit scared. But you want them to have a bit of a fear factor to try and put them off coming again. And they've just told Chappell. Now the older boy wants some attention too. Is that what you've done the buzzer for, for me to take your coat? Yeah. Right. I'm going to switch it off if you keep buzzing for no reason. It could just stay there until you do meals, all right? Do you know what you've done the buzzer for, Sarge? I've finished. Oh, bless. Probably lonely and wants to talk to people. My eight-year-old's bigger than that lad that we've got in J1. Scary. Just think if she was in here. <laughs> How old are you, Rich? 20. You must be cracking on a bit. 29. What, again? You've been stuck on 29 for about the last 15 years, have you? It's going to be a long night if you say I'm over 40. Oh, is it the it's snow on the roof? That makes you look older. Oh. The Queen's have now got six in, so... <laughs> Next, please. Right. Afternoon. Good evening. Morning. You were in custody before? Years and years ago. Right. John Farrow has just ploughed into a parked car, but why he lost control is a mystery. And the circumstances, please. We had a report that a male had been seen driving in erratically and crashing into another vehicle. You know more than me. <laughs> Witness uh, spoke to him. He appeared to be under the influence of some sort of substance. <gasps> Right. How are you feeling at the moment? Different. Different. Have you consumed any alcohol or drugs in the last 24 hours? Yeah, I don't think I've had any drugs. You've had no drugs? Right. How much alcohol you had, roughly? That's, that's what I'm on about. Uh, last night... Yeah, I'll, have, I'll have had about less than a bottle of wine last night. Last night? Yeah. Right, what about today? Have you had anything today? No, nothing today. Right, yeah. and you've had no drugs in the last 24 hours? No. Well, something's making you slayer a bit. Uh, I've had a wacky backy. You've had a wacky backy. When did you have your, your smoke blend? When was it? Well, you're up this morning. Right. Do you use drugs every day? Do you use wacky backy every day? Um, no. If I had the chance, I would, but I do it. Right then, I'm going to authorise your detention at the police station so we can secure preserve evidence into the offence that you've been arrested for. 
All right. Have they done anything wrong yet, then? Can't say at the moment. Do you want a solicitor? What for? I don't think it'll make no difference, will it? Right. Well, it's up to you. Yes or no? I'll think about it, then. OK. Right. right. Do you want to come over here, then? Yeah. When you came in, he was um, looking at me, but everything I was saying wasn't going in. It was as though he'd, he'd, he'd had a taken drugs or drink. A manner of experience, what would your thought be? What's that? On this. What, what you're going to blow? Yeah. I've no idea. Right. Deep breath. Blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's it. Done. Now what we do is we wait for the results. Okay. Zero. So it's nothing in my system at all. Yeah, whatever. If you've had some alcohol, it's out your system. Yeah, just... Mr. Farrow now thinks he can go home. All these coming I'm all off. Free, I'm all free. <laughs> He blew zero, so I think that's when he decided that that was his pass to leave. John, just come here, John. John, just come here. The results are zero. Do you want I to copy? I've done nothing, truthfully. I ain't done that wrong. You've just forced me into this, and I'm out of the When he was told that he would still be residing with us, he decided that he was going to take exception to that and get a little bit stroppy. Right, what I'm saying is, John, do you want to copy truth, of the... from police on all occasions, and I will do it. This is down the line. He's had something, so we can't just let him go because if he gets back in a car, he could wipe somebody out and kill somebody this time, so then we've got... It's on our conscience and we could have prevented that. I think it's scary. It makes me more angry. It's being blocked in the room when you're in. That's what scares me. The girl's dad has arrived in reception and he's not happy. I mean, the way they're treating them kids, to me, is to, to say it's criminal done or not. They don't want mistake. It's a fair time they've been done up like this. I'm just going to go uh, and speak to the, the dad of the sisters that have come in. There's some um, question about his uh, suitability for a pro adult. When kids are in custody, they need an appropriate adult to represent them. Normally, that's a parent, but not always. I'm Sergeant West, I'm the custody sergeant at the moment. I understand that there's some issue regards fingerprints and photographs, you know. Right. Have you, you, I, know, I appreciate you've been in custody yourself before, is that right? Right. So you know that there's, by law, we can take the fingerprints by force if need be. Well, you're not getting them done. Right, why is that then? Because I won't allow it. Why? Just the man is, I won't allow it. But there's nothing in law that stops us from doing that. There's nothing from walking out of here, then, is he? You walk out by all means for me. What I can do then deem is that you're not appropriate to be in the appropriate hall. You're not keeping them in. And then I can just get your offending team to do that on my behalf. You're not keeping them in. OK, so are you happy for me to go and do the fingerprints and the DNA then? Whatever. OK, so I'll go do that and I'll keep you updated once that's been done. The Youth Justice Service looks after kids in custody when an appropriate adult can't be found. Obviously, um, his concern is his children are in custody, um, which is understandable. Any parent whose children are in custody are normally quite apprehensive. Um, but what we do try to ensure is that parents understand why the children are in custody in the process in regards to what's going to happen. Are you going to cooperate during the interview as an appropriate? Well, I appreciate that, and I want these, these girls out of here because it's not a place for them, and I want them to be released as soon as we can. But I can't do that if I'm having little problems being chucked in the way, am I? If I think you're going to be obstructive, then I will just... will let you into custody this week. Well, don't let me know. That's what you want to do. OK. Right, if that, in that case, then I'm, I'm not going to let you act as appropriate adult. All right? And I'm going to let you offend your team to do that. You could tell straight away that he was being obstructive. It's an inconvenience for him. And for me, he's not going to have the, the kids' uh, best interests at heart, so at least if Michelle from the offender goes in with them. She can be independent, she can act, she's used to it. She can act on their, their best interests. Why don't you just come up? Please. The children are manners, so why should I have them photographed and fingerprinted? To me, they've never done all anything that late. To me, they treat them like criminals. They'll be crapping it in there. So if you put your hand out, 
Now, your fingerprints, your photos, and your DNA will be used to specially search against any crimes. And if you ever watch like CSI or anything mm -hmm. like that, where they throw it through a computer, yeah, match it. Yeah. yeah, that's what we do. Lovely. And if you just want to step to a It may be the 15 year old's first time in custody, but it's new to her dad being on the outside. This way. Yeah, I've been in and out of these places all my life, there enough. And I got put when I was 10 year old. I was in catch I was 18. I was in and out of prison until I was 34. And then the day it's cut barren being in there, what have we been in there? I don't know, I think I go mad. Because, like, he's overprotective of me. He wants to stop my pocket money, though. I usually like this. I usually go quiet and stay in. Shouldn't have done it in the first place. It's just a little mistake. Ricky Love has slept off his anger at being caught peeing in the street and is now fit for processing. Ricky's a hard man with a long criminal history, but recently things have changed and he's beginning to see the value of family. When was your last in, Ricky? A while ago, was it? I was for a robbery about a year ago. Yep. I can't do it, I don't know if I so you haven't been in for a while, yeah? You know, I've prison 20 years in August. I've been in and out 10 years. Getting fed up of it? I have, I've had a son. No, <laughs> <just> <laughs> How mind. old is he? He's six months, but he was eight weeks premature. Yeah, but he's my world, you know. Yeah. And I've sorted my life up, and then I've done a stupid thing having a week. And then... It's the drink, yeah. demon drink, isn't it? It just hurts me now. I'm in here not seeing him. Yeah. Well, hopefully you won't be here too long. All right, can you just stand in there, Ricky, just to say that they are prints, please? Do you want a cup of tea or do you want water? Cup of tea, please. Cup of tea, do you have sugar? Two, please. Two sugars, all right. Come on, then, we'll take you back. You'll be all right, come on. <laughs> just treat it as a one-off. <laughs> I've been in and out of jail the last 11 years, in and out, you know, and this is where it's led me, but the most important thing in my life now is my son, and that, that has kept me out of prison for a year, nearly two years in August, and it's made me proud of myself. It's kept me off drugs. He's um, sobering up a bit now. Um, I think he's made us, just been silly, urinating in the street. Um, and he wants to sort of get back to his son, so I think the sergeant's going to arrange to get him out of here as soon as he can. So I'm bringing up two girls, what well, my, my girls, to my girlfriend's girls, but they call me dad. That means the world to me. That's what I want in my life. You know, it's always been up there, like, like you always say, I'm never going back. But you do end up going back. But I've got everything not to go back. And this is why I'm angry with myself for having a stupid wee. Here you go, Ricky. I'm going to have a word with the Sarge about what's happening with you, all right? Cos you've come off drink a bit, haven't you? Just watch that, cos it's really hot. Um, yeah, so I'll come back and tell you what's going to happen. A brew does wonders for everyone. Even the girl's dad is starting to see sense. He's calmed down a hell of a lot now. Um, I need a cup of tea with some sugar in, so I'll give him that, which uh, seems to build bridges. I'll let you know as soon as we know. All right. I think he's, he's appropriate now. A cup of tea, it can turn anybody around. Nice cup of tea. It's gone through. Absolutely. Do you want to your hands I don't think you'll need it in there. <laughs> You've been doing some work. in at school, you. Yeah, no, I said. Never mind it, you know. Alright. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's got it. 
Both girls will now have dad in on their interviews. We could look at the triage side of things. There has to be an admission. It can't be um, that they're denying it. Unfortunately, if there is a denial, it will go straight to court because there's no other process that we can do. It's an admitted doctor. Triage means they'll be released without further action, as long as they know what they did was wrong. You've been arrested for shop theft for a £1.65 packet of bandages. Yeah, we had £1.50 for... I gave you money this morning. And then, yeah, I know, but we had to get a bandage for... I always give you money. Yeah, I know. You've always asked me for money. So you've, you've gone into Tesco's with your sister, yeah? I'm not crying. I'm not showing her yet. Let me go Come get on. you some tissues. I'm not showing. Just like your pennies, darling. Come here. I knew you'd be upset. So were you on your way to school? Yeah. Is that where you were going? OK. What was wrong with his arm? Why did she need She's a bandage? She's like... Do you know what people have done, like, a sort of nice challenge? Yes. That she's done them, and, like, yeah. one of them started bleeding, so... Okay. And it goes all down her arm, so... So you knew that you were going to need a bandage and you knew you didn't have enough money <laughs> and you knew that you were going to steal it, is that what you're saying to me? Well, we didn't know we were going to steal it until, like, we worked out how much we had left cos we thought we would had enough out there and when we got the entrance and that, but we didn't. And then, like, police came and <laughs> started kicking off and then they put her in handcuffs cos it was, like, she was, like, real stressy. So you understand that <laughs> taking something from a shop that's not yours is wrong yeah. without paying for it? OK. And this is the consequence of that. Even when you're doing it for the best of intentions, you're still stealing. And the daft thing is, they've got a first aid point in St Stephen's, so if you could have gone to one of the security guards, they'd just given her a bandage. Yeah, I know. All right. Uh -huh. So let's get you in there. I'm a bit annoyed because I've got a bandage. I mean, I said I gave her money this morning, and she'd never have been shit. If I know she was always that, I'd have got one myself. Yours. Now it's the older sister's turn and she's in bigger trouble. Also accused of assaulting the security guard. If they'd have behaved at the scene, then they wouldn't be here. Like the security already said, we'd have dealt with it in-house, wouldn't we have got the police involved. So it's gone from a simple, low-value shock theft to a possible assault coming up into custody, going through the system. Stop checking. Tell me what happened. We tried us getting out and he pushed me against the wall. And I didn't make it, so I kicked off and I started punching him and kicking him and hitting him and then ramming him into the door. And then the police came. You probably needed to take your details yeah. first, I would think, and that's maybe why they were asking you to stay a little bit longer. It was no need pushing against the wall. I understand that. I just need to talk to you about the allegation that's been made against her at the moment, OK? Yeah, but sorry you're saying allegation against her. End of the day, he's done what he's done. They're allowed to... They're allowed he's to not allowed turn. to do it to a man, eh? They're allowed to decide. I've got the right to go across there and knock his big head off. No, you haven't, Andrew. I have. Andrew, can I ask you to calm down, otherwise? I'm going to ask you to leave the interview and leave the custody sway, OK? So do you think that that behaviour that you showed there is appropriate? I don't know what happened to me, but just... Just got a bit angry. Yeah. Yeah. First thing I've done it. When you're nice to people, like you're being nice to me now, and, you know, you're talking to me quite respectfully, I'm talking to you quite respectfully, you get more out of people, don't you? I don't need to tell you that assaulting somebody who's trying to detain you for a criminal offence is wrong. I'm sure you understand that, don't you? Yeah. Andrew, my advice to you would be do not go around and punch him. I thought I wanted him. I know. But we all want to do things, don't we, and we can't do them. Otherwise, you're going to end up in here, which is of no use to these two, is it? It's not very scary. But I must have thought that. So we'd either deny it or um, Dad would be a little bit more obstructive than what he was, but he was all right until the second interview, so we did OK, really. OK. Both of them have got no previous convictions, so I'm going to look at speaking to youth defending team at the disposal of way of uh, triage. Hopefully that's going to be a bit better than taking them to court. And they're definitely banned from Tesco's as well, so the outcome there's a bit better. I'm just hoping Dad don't go in. John Farrow, the man who crashed his car but wasn't over the limit, is getting impatient. No, no, yeah. That's oh, sorry, oh, no. I will be pressing charges. OK. Uh, I am sleeping here for the left. This has all been explained to you, haven't it? No, it hasn't. 
It has. You've been locked up for unfit for a drink or drugs, so it's an impairment. All right, following the accident you had, do you remember that much? No, I don't remember no accident. Exactly. So that may suggest to me that you're still under the influence. He started trying to tell me what to do, but there's only uh, one gaffer in here, and that's me, so I don't like it when people try and tell me. He's still obviously under the influence of something. To work out what he's under the influence of, the cops have another trick up their sleeve. These boys are here to do the field impairment test, which um, is a series of interesting little tests to see if they think he's under the influence. If they uh, deem that he is, then they will ask for an FME to come out and take blood, for, for obviously for the offensive impairment. Can you take him down with the traffic officers into the yard? Yeah. Take him that way. Right, won't take too long, but it's just a series of tests to see whether you're actually impaired to drive. There he goes, now the Bobby's showing him how to do it. You must raise your right foot, keeping your legs straight and your toes pointing forward. This is the one leg stand test. He's got to lift his foot. Pointing your toe up to six to eight inches off the ground. Count out the land. 1,001, 1,002. 1,000 to 1,000. I know it wobbles if I do that. Can I have a straight bit of ground? Because my ground goes down. Which bit would you like then? Just stand on my bit. Yeah, that would be good. Right. Right, next one is called the finger and nose test. When I tell you which hand to move, you must touch the tip of your nose with the tip of that finger. You might have the old. Yeah, Warren. Yeah. Here. Right, next one. You must take nine heel to toe steps along the line. We have to walk toes to toe and not go off the Right. I would say that he has passed the test. The items that he has failed are not down to his impairment, but mainly down to his lack of possible mental capacity to understand what he's meant to do. So I would say that he isn't impaired based on this test. So I think he's certainly under the influence of something. I would suggest that a, a blood test would be a Accurate. More accurate reading of exactly what's in the system and a doctor's statement to indicate whether he feels he would have been impaired at the time of trial. From my observations about the test, it looked like he may have failed it. However, the, the boppies have come back and said that he's passed. They still think he's maybe under the influence of something, which would coincide with the fact that he said he's under medication and he's had some today. But Mr. Farrow is now refusing to cooperate anymore. He's been in and trying to be given blood. He's in there a while. He's refused to give you and he's refused, refused to give blood. Um, therefore, we're going to keep him in custody until the morning, until he's fit, let it, the, the medication wear off. Then he'll be fit to be uh, spoken to and uh, fit to be charged as well. A night in the cells brings most people to their senses. As a new day dawns at Priory Road, it's checking out time. And first to leave are the two boys suspected of stealing lead from a roof. Having admitted their crime, they're about to be released without a charge. All the 11-year-old needs to worry about is his mum. Your property. Is it yours? Yeah. 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 It's a little older than your brother. You need some friends of your own age. Do normal things. Playing football. You don't want them to come back. It's not the environment that you want a small child to, uh, to, to basically be in. While you're on bail, you don't want to commit any more offences. All right. Don't think you will commit any more, to be honest. Very neat writing as well. You could tell he was still scared and he was thinking about what he's done. And I don't really think that he's going to commit any more further offences, really. I know sometimes we could feel sorry for him, but he's still a serious message that we're, we don't want him back, really. And I think Mum's going to give him more punishment than we can. Look 
got family. Lovely. That's what I miss. Yeah. Ricky Love is also being reunited with his child. Thank you anyways for that. For weeing in public, he's got a 12-month conditional discharge. Didn't really mean no harm, but it's way for it. How are you feeling at the moment? Different. Different. John Farrow, the man who crashed his car, was under the influence of drugs. Prescription painkillers for a bad back. I hadn't been to my doctor for a while, and my tablets was all coming down to my last ones. But I didn't realise even that I shouldn't have been taking certain tablets even while driving. Didn't even, didn't even click in. Right, Mr Farrow, are you fit and well to get home? I will do my best. He wasn't done for the crash, but for refusing the blood test. He was fined £50 and banned from driving for a year. I must admit, next time I see any of you, I will run. Well, you better start running now, then. Anyway, I'll see you later, Mr Farrer. You'll Lovely. be with us again in about a month, OK? I can imagine. Right, cheers. The father of the two shoplifters is nervously awaiting their fate. It's like what I did years ago. I mean, in the end, it didn't work for me years ago. But... May I say, she's the ball come in, the ball good girls. What? She's actually got a bad temper. Oh, Hopefully, it'll stop us from coming back in here. But Dad's got to help them do that. They're both going to be triaged, which means they're going to get um, released. As far as we're concerned, it's over and done with. There's no criminal conviction or anything like that. We do need, obviously, your support of it, though, because what we want to do is make sure triage works, because we don't obviously want them back in, in police custody. I don't know how you feel about about that. Oh, they're going to get a telephone from you when you get back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, well, what we'll do, then, is we'll go, um, go to the desk and explain to the girls what's happening. I've been learning the lesson. 16 years. Well, she has definitely, have not you? Stay to you. Obviously, it's been explained what's happening. Uh, there's going to be no further action at this time. The truth has set them free. But was it the whole truth? I think you've got money there, look. Right, so that's that's the bag. Bag. What was that? Yes. So why didn't you buy it? <laughs> Go on. In the nicest possible way, I don't want to see you in here again. OK. All right, so you're free to go. Good. <laughs> I've been here five hours. OK, well, I'll speak. I'll give you a ring later on just to see how I am, is it? All right. All right, cheers. See you, mate. See ya. I'm happy with them, but I'm also annoyed that they pinched a bandit, but they got money on them. So I could have paid for it. For the sake of what, sent me a pence. You could have avoided all this, couldn't you? Yeah? Where we can, we'll deal with um, juveniles outside of the custody and get other agencies involved like you've offended. Um, but it can't be nice for people to come in here. I know I'm not I'm in here, but it's nice seeing me, but right. no uh, little kids in here. Next time, it's shut down in the lock-up. A man who's been seized is having a seizure. Another man picked up is having a paddy. And if you value your freedom, assaulting an officer isn't the best course of action, no matter how rock solid your defence. Well, I tell you what, I've read some fairy tales in all my life, but that takes the biscuit. Fair enough. New comedy next here on BBC One. Self-appointed community leader Citizen Khan leads a call to prayer.